more senses you involve in an experience, more memorable the experience becomes. And even in my own business, when I design and create products, I try to involve every single sense. Even great leaders get stuck. Others thrive. I'm Mark Cook, New York Times best-selling author and president of Windfall Partners. We get leaders unstuck and thriving with their teams. Clients upgrade leader retreats and conferences with my five-star keynotes and breakouts on leaders bold encounters. Also, leaders get weekly consulting as they execute key steps. Plus, brief check-ins guarantee results live or via Zoom. After turnarounds as chief executive and nine global studies of two million award-winning leaders, I've coached 4,000 client wins at top brands with my approach in over 50 cities worldwide. My Bold Encounters is an advanced system for leading. First, powerful steps on a path forward. Second, problem-solving skills that beat obstacles fast. Leaders create revenue breakthroughs and clients see new profits. Now let's lead with Bold Encounters today. Welcome to Bold Encounters. I am so excited today to be with my friend Tommaso Cardulo. He has a business named after himself for obvious reasons, as you'll see, Tommaso Cardulo. He's a designer of clothier and he has some very interesting expertise around aesthetics and pleasure and very positive constructive ways and we're we're going to talk about that topic today what i'm doing is i'm dressed casual because we are talking about purpose and at a deeper level at a more profound purpose level we serve customers and clients in their heart and in their souls and we do things for them that can't be seen but are internal to them and so today on Friday, you're going to see Tommaso dressed to the hilt. I'm in his office. You can see behind me that I might be somewhere like that. But I'm wearing a sweatsuit because I love how this sweatshirt is my favorite sweatshirt and how it feels on my skin and how easily it flexes and it fits me well. And I have my Lululemon jogger pants on that are so comfortable. There's a free ad for them. And this pleasure of sense and touching and what we wear has been something we've all experienced during pandemic and, and really enjoy at times when it's the right time. And I thought today was the right time. Tommaso, how are you? It's great to have you, my friend. Well, how Mark, doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing very well. Excited to be here. <laughs> Excited to have you here. And uh, um, really, uh, this is a good day, a great day. It's game day. <laughs> It's game day. We, Tommaso, uh, we'll do a little disclosure. Tommaso and I worked together decades ago at Franklin Covey, wonderful place. And he was an expert at several things, including the leather that was the fine leather from Argentina and some of the uh, simulated snake skin and some high quality items and some other aesthetics we're gonna talk about. And so that's how we know each other. And I know enough just to recognize that he may not be from St. George. And so we're going to talk about his story to start. And Thomas, Tommaso, how did you arrive here? Start at the very beginning. You lived in Italy and life was good. Tell us about that part of your life. Well, life was good. Life is good and life will be good. I, I, I really feel that... Uh, uh, I have that gift to enjoy life and you know I was I, w I won the lottery by being born and raised in Italy uh, honestly <laughs> what an amazing amazing country talking about uh, sensorio every senses woo you know it just ex explodes you know uh, so I was born and raised in, in Sicily uh, by by the ocean and behind my, there was the Mount Etna. So we had this beautiful, majestic mountain on one side, and this blue Mediterranean ocean on the other side. It really was a, a fabulous, fabulous time in my life. Then um, I, I, I became a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You know, I was 19. Uh, it happened. I was not looking for it. I, I investigated this new faith and thought about it, prayed about it, felt 
good about it. Uh, I felt, you know, I want to be this new faith be part of my life and as a result of that uh, uh, the next choices in my life brought me to uh, uh, serve a mission full-time mission in london england that's where i learned english i'm still in the process <laughs> and then uh, after that i decided while i was in uh, in uh, in the uk to further my education uh, to get a degree in uh, in this in the states so that's where I came. I came to, to the States uh, age 25 uh, with $300 in my pocket <laughs> and uh, starting as a freshman. And, uh, and honestly speaking, at one point I said, what have I done? Why am I here with, um, <laughs> you know, with solid money and uh, starting from scratch? But what an amazing, amazing experience. He, uh, this country is an amazing country, honestly. A country of uh, opportunity, a country of uh, where dream come true. And you know, you need to work hard. That's that's the nature of the beast. You ro ro roll up your sleeves. And I, w I always wanted to be a designer since I was uh, 15. I remember being in a in my philosophy class in, in high school, and my teacher pounding at that, I said, Tommaso, Tommaso, pay attention. And I was just doodling, you know, things like this. I always still doodle, you know, and, uh, and I just uh, loved it. It was a passion I had since I was uh, just a young child. And um, I came here and uh, uh, step by step, little by little, I, I felt that that was my mission. So, and that's in fact, I, I love to mentor young people because I tell them that gifts, passions are given purposely. It's not a random delivery. It's a purposely given gift that a good God gave us because he knows that through magnifying the gift, the talent, we can bless our own lives, life as well as the lives of people around. And this is what has been for me. It's been absolutely a joy, a gift, a fabulous ride to to uh, magnify my passions, my talents, and see the difference that is making my personal life uh, and in the lives of people that I I meet on a on a daily basis. That's terrific. Let me let me ask you about when you were in Sicily before this uh, spiritual conversion happened. You were growing up as a young man in Italy. And for those of us that haven't grown up in Italy, give us a little bit of a sense, if it's a stereotypically full of the senses we think, where, where you just bombarded with great tastes and great visuals and great sounds and smells. And what, was it what we imagine compared to here? It is. It, it, it truly is. I mean, I was just in Italy uh, last week. I spent two weeks uh, in Rome and in, in Puglia. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, an explosion of, uh, of uh, senses, of uh, excitement. You know, the beautiful part about Italy, when I was younger, I used to take it for granted. I mean, didn't know any better. Of course. That, that, was, that was what it was. I mean, you, you walk in street where... Uh, I mean, for thousands and thousands of years, the world text talk to you. The world talk talk to you and say stories of people that have lived there. I've experienced. I mean, um, fifteen minutes from my home, there was this uh, Greek amphitheater that that is still in great conditions. And I mean, I used to go to these uh, uh, churches that they were and frescoes they were you know 600 years old and still vivid and powerful and then oh and then the food unreal i mean literally the food is i mean i just uh, my mouth salivate just in thinking about it i mean i you know i smell uh, some uh, basil it, it brings me to my childhood i i i i taste i taste them you know fresh tomato i just say wow and, you know it, so Italy literally is a country of senses. Every single sense is involved. The sight, the smell, the taste, the, the, the feel. I mean, it, it's just, a, it's just a, a, like I said, I won the lottery. I really <laughs> did win the lottery. Even though now that I live in the States, I feel like I have the best 
of all worlds. You know, I live in this beautiful par part of the world with majestic mountains and and then you know and a quality of life that is just uh, perfect. But then I have the opportunity to go to Italy because I. I, I produce all my clothes in Italy on a regular basis. I still all my family, but my wife and my children are here. So I'm a blessed man, man. I'm, I'm, I, I'm lucky. That's terrific. That's terrific. Uh, let, me, let me ask you a funny question about that. So I'll, I'll tell you a little story, and it would be embarrassing to talk about Italian food in front of you, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to anyway, because it, it really makes the point. So I heard once at work, one of my previous in one of my previous professional lives from one of my friends that that uh, Domino's wasn't really in the pizza business, and they were in a different, uh, more profound business. and And I wanted to investigate that myself, and so I went and interviewed a, a, a bunch of leaders at Domino's and ask them what they were really doing. Because every time I thought of Domino's, I thought they deliver fast and they make pretty good pizza. And it's really interesting what I found. They said, well, really, we're in the business of gathering friends and loved ones. And when you have a friend invite you over for a social occasion, they might have Domino's. If it's casual, they likely will. They'll have a variety of pizzas. They'll have some, some hot wings. They'll have some salad. And if you'd come over in t-shirts, this is a true story in my experience. I was invited over. I came over in t-shirts and in casual clothing. And there's Domino's on the counter. And I had a very wealthy friend that provided it. And I realized that after interviewing these people, if he had had Ruth's Chris, on the counter when we came, it wouldn't have brought us together. We wouldn't have stayed as long. We would have thought strange things about him. It wouldn't be quite right. So even the super quality, some places and sometimes and from some providers, it's not quite right. On the other side, if, if I would have had, uh, I won't say a name for obvious reasons, but if I'd had a cheaper pizza that maybe is really easy to pick up for five bucks, and it was on the counter, undelivered, it would have been less and underwhelming. We would have thought maybe we were supposed to bring our children. It wouldn't have been quite right. And in that experience of interviewing, I realized that from these, from these leaders and executives that, that they have plenty of resources. In fact, they grew 16% in pandemic instead of going out of business like most restaurants. And because they understood what they were really doing, they made some innovations and tweaks and became better. They were already the best at delivering into homes. But because they understood exactly what they were doing, they get it right. They have plenty of resources to hire the very best chefs anywhere and make the best Italian food anywhere. But they just get it right. And I think that's maybe a hidden advantage that the US has over some countries is our ingenuity in business. Like we, we really try to get it right, even though sometimes right isn't the highest quality like Chris Chris necessarily. So do you find that that's the case here? And, and how, do, how do you see that with all of the amazing food and senses from Italy? What, what, do you, what are you, the thoughts that pop in your head about that story? You know, uh, two thoughts came to mind, Mark. One is, um, uh, for instance, food in Italy is um, a way of life in every aspect. In fact, I was just talking this morning to a friend of mine talking about when we do business in Italy, it's always, I would say, always around food. Mm -hmm. I had experiences personally, uh, but also friends of mine had experiences where, you know, they, they had a meeting and uh, they never closed the, the deal. In the meeting, the deal was closed, was closed around the table, either at the restaurant or at the family. Once I went to a very wealthy Italian family and they invited us to, to their home and we ate there and that's where we closed the deal. Not before, not after, there. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I think food uh, provides a message. Italians, I don't want to sound presumptuous, but understood 
how to deliver this message as Domino. I love them. Domino is not just pizza, it's the messages we bring friends together. Yeah. Powerful, powerful. Yeah. Well, in the, in, in the original homeland version in Italy where you grew up, I can see how important the activity of preparing, even if it's not from scratch, like maybe like we did, a bunch of men getting together to watch a fight or something, Maybe they didn't make it from scratch, but they probably assembled part of it and were had had a, a high standard in in that country for sure. Um, what's interesting also about that is it makes me think of in in my work. I've had the opportunity to interview and investigate some work of chefs, and what what I found remarkable is when the ones that are so successful with their own restaurants and they become many restaurants they bring a team together as you described with meals it's such an innate activity it's not just about the taste it's not just about the best taste it's about the whole experience the connection and multiple profound purposes are woven together not just the the pleasure of taste uh, tell me about the bonding um, and the the team aspects and the family advantages and experiences from growing up in Italy that you know that maybe yeah. an American doesn't. You know, um, uh, two things. Two, yeah, let, let me let me share this. Growing up, I my father um, had a very good job, but uh, it, it was probably an hour an hour twenty minutes away from where uh, you know my grandparents lived. But we every single weekend. Punctually, my dad used to be at home around 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. And we were ready with lugg luggages to get into the car, drive down one hour to one hour and a half, depends. Sometimes the, the roads were, uh, uh, you know, no, no ready the highway was not ready so it took longer than after the highway was ready took shorter but we went to see my grandparents because every sunday all the family got together and a, a sometime a day we're having great time i mean they used to eat for two three even four hours and now that i am um, more into this uh, American mentality where eat and go, you know, <laughs> I just say, what did they talk for three, four hours, you know, every single week. But there, it was amazing. They laugh, they talk, they connected and, and they build, build a relationship, build a, a com communion, build a, a, a true family. And, and now, to be honest with you, I am trying to, I've tried to establish the same thing in my family. Sure, we don't take three hours, but at least one hour, one hour and a half every Sunday is a time where we all get together and we talk around the table, eating good food and talking about the week. In fact, one of my, my favorite things to do is asking my family and my friends. I always have new people coming uh, to dinner every, every Sunday say, what was the highlight of your week and that not only create connection but also bring optimism and people say wow we really are blessed even though it was a, a tough week at work or whatever but the glass is not at the end at the end of the day can be seen half full or half empty and sometimes we should even be grateful to say well there is water in the glass so why don't we have a, 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 a heart of gratitude, a heart of appreciation. So to be, to make a long story short, I believe that, mm, you know, just being around the table with people that you love, with food that uh, satisfy not just uh, the appetite, but also the senses is something extremely valuable. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. Um, if I have a leadership or a sales client that talks about a team building experience where they're taking people to the movie, I, I gently and, and, and pretty persistently beg them to consider something slightly different, especially eating together yeah. in a very visceral way, like a food kitchen or 
renting many places, rent kitchens to have from scratch. Brilliant it, idea. Is this really, if you look at the data and the studies that have been done on family dinner, which can mean people you love, it's humans gathering together in such an innate activity and building something that tastes great together and celebrating that. The data is overwhelming. The learning that takes place when it's on a repetitive basis and the collegial feeling that happens, the camaraderie, the esprit de corps over time that develops by integrating the making and the eating and the celebration after is a really remarkable thing. Let me ask you, um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you today is because I know because of a couple of experiences that I've had from you, not just working with you, but, but bumping into it inadvertently, like you invited me to a taste event of high-end chocolate down to medium. No low, you, there wasn't a lot of, you know, low-end chocolate there, but, but you, you had a real passion around that event. Could you tell us a little bit about why you're passionate about tasting chocolate when you make wedding clothes and, and, yeah. and uh, black tie event clothes? Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you asked this question because that's a perfect example um, of, uh, of something unique. So let me, uh, first of all, I want to uh, find chocolate testing and, uh, and vinegar. It's a hobby. Even though I do not like the chocolate. <laughs> and people, yeah, people say, huh? You know, when I do this presentation, AI, AI, I, I mean, I married a, 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 a wonderful lady that eats chocolate every single day. <laughs> My wife would be married 32 years. She has practically eaten chocolate every day, about six months, once a My oldest daughter was, was breastfeeding our, our oldest daughter, and, and chocolate was triggering the the colic. But beside the six months, my wife literally, religiously, every day eats a piece of chocolate. <laughs> and I don't care. But I found that chocolate tasting is a sensorial experience. And I always say there is chocolate. And there is chocolate. And I want to experience the finest. And so when I have, um, uh, when um, Uh, I do this chocolate, this chocolate from all over the world, from, from Italy, France, uh, uh, England, uh, and Belgium, and, and I, I, I teach how to, to partake of the chocolate. You don't need to be, eat a, bis, a big piece, you just a little piece, and rub it, and smell it, and melt it, and then chew it, and then it experience the full experience that is all senses are involved something that is flat becomes polyedrical I mean many angles many dimension multi-dimension and that's what I love and then and then it's amazing to see what people uh, see and, and one and one thing that I also love is when I invite people to taste vinegar And when people taste vinegar, uh, in fact, at the beginning of every of my presentation, I say, how many people love chocolate versus vinegar? I would just say nine is a 90-10. 90% say chocolate, 10% say vinegar. At the end of this presentation, the majority becomes to, towards the vinegar. Really? Because once they discover these new things, that their, their, their paradigm say, There is no way that I can drink a shot of vinegar, or there is no way that vinegar can, can but once they experience the, the, the sensorial um, dimension of, uh, of a good vinegar, you have a shift of paradigm. And then one thing hey, is fascinating for me. So I am one of those person and likes to experience even things that maybe initially may not seem pleasant to me but then can become a great experience and it brings joy and you know life is to find joy and, and joy can be found in, 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 in unexpected places sometimes.
It's terrific. Uh, it, it really is a great metaphor in two ways for providing a service or an offering even to someone. I mean, the, the fact that you're saying, I bring people, and I even to this moment having experienced it, had forgotten because it's been almost a year now, but you, we're tasting, quote unquote, in a, a restaurant called Taste, yeah, and nice. we're going to a chocolate tasting. So we've got the word taste everywhere. And yet that product, as you showed us that night, you made us touch it and feel it and break it and touch and, and feel the quality tactically, tactically. And then you had to smell it and you did what you described, all the senses that you could, you brought it out of a product. It's such a great metaphor for other products. Absolutely. If you're Absolutely. in the sensory business, bring Absolutely. them all to bear. And you know, I remember one thing that a, a, a professor of mine in psychology taught me when I, I was taking a psychology class at Brigham Young University. She said, more senses you involve in an experience, more memorable the experience becomes. Mm. And even in my own business, when I design and create products, I try to involve every single sense from, uh, from the material to, to the way it, it, it fits you. I have even, I, I create even little details that tell stories. And, and, and these stories brings you, uh, connect you with, uh, with, with an artisan. And I mean, it, it really is a multidimensional. And you know one thing, uh, like for instance here, I have this this little button. This little button is made by an artisan. And this artisan, his name is Fabrizio. Fabrizio was a guy who was born very poor. In fact, he lived in um, on the street as a teenager, and was in drugs and so on and so forth. And then one day he just. Um, was observing an older man, an older gentleman, uh, an artisan working on making jewelry. And this older gentleman stood up, went up outside the, the, his lab, and invited this Fabrizio to come in. He showed me, show him what to do. Uh, it, and uh, Fabrizio became a jeweler from that experience. Not only the older man made a difference in Fabrizio's life, but Fabrizio now makes a difference in many people's life. So he, so this little button for me is called uh, beauty from ashes, mm -hmm. where you can just, uh, somebody that practically didn't have much of future, but now because of developed talent and strengthen his passion is now making a difference. So every time one of my clients has these buttons, I see it, but yesterday one said, Tommaso, Tell me more about this button. And he said, let me tell you about Fabrizio. <laughs> well, it's, it's so beautiful because it looks beautiful. And Fabrizio is such, is, is such an analogy with your vinegar experience. Yeah, yeah, I mean, those yeah, two yeah. are essentially the same thing. If you, if you think that you're something that is underwhelming and very practical only and just subsiding or subsisting each day, there's something else. And I'd love you to tell me uh, about that vinegar because that is ve that was very surprising to me how we would literally drink a little bit of yeah. vinegar. Yeah. So I, I don't think people understand how that could even make sense. Tell us a little yeah. more about that vinegar. Do you know, I, I, I want to tell two things. One is, Many of us are afraid of something, mm -hmm. okay? And like I said, when I start to give this presentation, it's fun, it's recreation, it's like a, it's a hobby, like I said. I invite friends uh, and sometimes even clients to, as, as, as my guest to this uh, taste presentation. And I'm telling you, everybody, at least there is one or two in the room that they say, I've never done this and I'm scared. I mean, I am scared to put this vinegar in my mouth, you know, especially as a shot, you know, not dipping bread or things like that. But again, education and, uh, and also inviting them, try. And when they try, they, they experience something 
that is uh, new, that is uh, uh, overwhelming sometimes. I have this vinegar, for instance, ginger vinegar, that I, I, I tell them, where I, I, I use it sometimes to put it in my San Pellegrino uh, uh, drink. I put this, this San Pellegrino, then I put uh, uh, some um, uh, ginger vinegar, and then a little uh, couple of raspberry, a mint leaf to make it more sexy, and then I drink it. It's incredible. I mean, people say, wow! I mean, I'm drinking this water with this vinegar, and I've never experienced anything like this. Again, for me, life is all about experiencing and educating. And once people are educated, it's a game changer. I, mean, I see it in my business. Sometimes, you know, all my clothes are made in Italy. They're made with some of the best fabrics there are. They're made by this artisan, one of my artisans. She's a, an 83 years old lady that worked since a little girl with her grandmother making Barbie clothes. And, and now she, then she worked for Valentino and now she does all my knits. And, um, and sometimes they are they're expensive. And at the beginning, to be honest with you, I was afraid to say, I, I, I wish I could make it cheaper, but I, I don't, I, 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 I don't, I, I want to support my Italian artisan because I want them to have a good life. But once you're educated, tell them the difference. I'm telling you, first, my clothes have, uh, th these clothes are, they have a canvas inside with Orsair. And I tell you know, this costs $500 more than what you buy in, in, a, in, a, in a retailer because they're glued together. I'm telling you, 99% of the time, if they buy, because once you educate them and you tell them the importance of this horse hair that will mold with you and the temperature of your body creates this, this, this oneness between the cloth and yourself. And once the people feel, I mean, like a friend, there are certain clothes that when I wear them, I feel like, man, I'm like Moses. <laughs> I can go in, the w everybody, it brings me confidence. In fact, you know, I think, um, let me tell you this one, just because I, I'm passionate about it. I, more than a designer, I see myself as a mechanic. I see people as Formula One cars. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, I mean the ultimate machine and what they need is just a tune-up and so as a, as, a, as a designer slash mechanic I am those that will help them tune up and once they wear something that makes them feel good they are unstoppable. Once you feel confident you can conquer the world. It's like a, this Ferrari that wants to tune up hit the road and win the race. It's that simple. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. It's a, and it, it echoes Fabrizio uh, as well. And uh, it's interesting how these stories that you're telling us, um, how important a story is that when, when you talk about aesthetics and beauty and things that are beautiful and high quality and the, the story of, of both of those last examples. It makes me think that that uh, emotions and, and the beauty and quality can cause such a deep emotion. Yes, yes. And it's almost as though it's the significant other partner, spouse of a story. And the, the way that you put together beautiful things and the stories behind it is really something. And there are a lot of industries, a lot of businesses in the world that are fulfilling something deeper than just stuff and delivering paper clips or something. They're, they're doing something that causes a person to feel confident, like you say, or some other way. And, and to realize the lesson of, of Tommaso, of weaving stories and emotion and beautiful things together, that's a powerful way to market or message or provide value to someone I think that they'll remember. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So, so let me, I want to ask you a funny, go forward in your story um, back from Italy and, and 
back word from where we're talking about right now. And when we worked together, my awareness, we worked briefly together, yeah. and my awareness was that you were sourcing the finest leather that you could find on the planet to make what was then the Franklin Day Planner, which was, you know, in today's value, probably a four or $500 binder that you'd carry around and schedule your day with, right? And, um, and I don't know that that's all you did, and I don't know much about what you did there. And so could you just tell us a little bit about the beautiful things and the quality impact that, that was going on there at that job so long ago? Yeah. You know, the Franklin Covey experience was um, uh, foundational and monumental. Mm -hmm. I, I, I loved uh, uh, learning uh, in many, many aspects. One of the things that I, one of the things, I started in international initially. Mm -hmm. So helping, creating and kind of becoming like the liaison between our international offices and the, the our uh, U.S. Um, uh, corporate office. But then, again, because of my passion and my talents in creating, they asked me to, uh, the leadership of Franklin Covey asked me to start to do and create these, these um, uh, leather goods. And initially, you know, we did these beautiful binders, but then we realized that the binders were... Um, that there was something else that they needed. And we realized that our number one customer were females. Mm. And so I said, you know what, why don't we create also professional leather goods, like briefcases, purses, that uh, can entice these uh, uh, professional women. And that was a beautiful ride. I mean, literally exciting to just uh, create, uh, um, you know, a binder, uh, you know, an agenda and the, and the briefcase, the match, and, <laughs> and the women just uh, went crazy. I, I, you know, it was exciting to see, you know, going to the airport. Uh, I mean, my wife used to get excited. Oh, that's one of yours. <laughs> yeah, but we, we don't need to. And she used to stop them. And then, you know, but it, it, for me, it's creativity is create emotion provide experiences and one of my for instance one of the things that I think my one of my greatest satisfaction in Franklin Coy was that we did not only create beautiful leather goods but were also very functional I used to say they are smart outside and they are smart inside so our Prince bags, they had an intelligence. There were a place for a phone, there was a place for a, an agenda, there was a place for a, a water bottle, there was a zipper for to putting, you know, private items. In fact, at one point, I remember, you know, people, uh, we had retail, retail next to coach, and people used to buy our two of our bags and take back the coach bag just because they said, you know, they are the same quality, they are great looking, and they are smart. Mm -hmm. They have a functionality. They are not just a black hole. They have an intelligence. So I always, I always think that creativity, it's a, a, as, a, as a, a symbiosis between um, beauty and intelligence. That's oh, a beautiful, beautiful thought. That was a beautiful experience for sure. And they were gorgeous and the highest quality. And uh, that was quite that was quite a piece of work, that line, really. Um, okay, before we get to your current business, uh, I want to ask you, we're kind of in the middle of your story a bit. And most people have a situation in life that really takes them by surprise. Many of us have several big ones, but... Uh, it's often not positive and it slows us down, it derails us, it blocks us, it's, uh, it's an obstacle. It may even be malevolent or really a problem in life. Um, have you ever had a moment where you've been stuck like that? Um, yes. You know, I, I, I'm a passionate person. There are, 
there are a lot of things that I like. I mean, uh, at one point I, I wanted to be, I, I, I like to, even though I, you know, I speak uh, with a strong accent and, um, and I was afraid uh, to, that people would not understand me, but I wanted to be a public speaker. Hmm. I really wanted to, or a consultant for company. So for, there was a time where, in fact, you know, you know, talking about Franklin and especially the coffee aspect. So, you know, I would like to be a presenter for coffee. I, I really did, you know, and uh, wanted to be s something like this. Uh, but then I said, you know, Tommaso, don't forget your real passion. Don't forget. And then, you know, I, go, I got derouted. And then I, I, I remember uh, uh, I, I, we lived in, um, in Florida. Then we, we moved here to, to Utah to start a little children clothing company mm. that just went, exploded. I mean, we <laughs> were in, in Neiman Marcus, we were in Nordstrom, you know, uh, USA Today did a, 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 a you know, a, a, an article on us, how this little company from Utah uh, had all this uh, amazing clothing. But then uh, the dream fell through, uh, we had some problems and I, and I just felt, you know, thing, life is too short. And so I left the company. Unfortunately, uh, nine months later, the company just, uh, uh, you know, uh, died. It, 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 that was a three months where I felt like I want to stay in Utah, but there is not much fashion in Utah. So I need to go back to, to either New York or, or maybe Los Angeles or maybe go to Europe. But at that time, I w family w at that time we had a young family. We wanted to make sure that our young family w was um, in a place that was conducive to to a good quality of life. So we made that decision. And so for three months it was difficult because I just said, career, family, and uh, you know I, I'm a, I'm a religious kind of person, and I brought this to God. I pray about it, thought about it, and as a, a decision was to stay I here because we wanted to provide more, a better quality of life to our children. And I had to roll up the sleeves. And, and in fact, that's why I, Franklin Covey, initially, I was in international. So I was like a, I, I used to say, I felt like I was a, a, a air traffic controller, you know, so <laughs> nothing to do with creativity. <laughs> but then, <laughs> fortunately, because uh, my passion is always being visible, somebody noticed what I, I could do and what I love to do. They say, hey, can you help us here? And as a result of that, they offered me a position that was more uh, in tune with my abilities and my talents. And it was an amazing ride. And and then from that point on, then I start to make things for, you know, a bigger company and uh, and um, consulting for company, you know, like Kenneth Cole and uh, uh, and so on and so forth. And it was beautiful. We, it's been a beautiful ride. And then, five years ago, I thought, yeah, now is the time to just uh, do what I always wanted to do, do something on my own. And it's been an exciting experience. <laughs> That's so terrific. Um, I, I can't take even one ounce of credit for that moment of shift in your position. Uh, I can't even re recollect what happened, to be honest. But I do have a very strange memory. You know, I've, I've had a health incident uh, with my spine, so I've lost a few memories, but, but they're sporadic and random and very few. And uh, so it could be with that, or I just don't remember, but I do remember one moment. It's so funny what we can remember in life. I remember a hallway and a conversation with us when you still were just the liaison. And I remember recognizing and feeling myself the discomfort. I'm not sure I had the vision or imagination to, to tell someone to switch your job or anything. I don't know. I don't, I don't recollect having anything to do with that, really, to be honest. But I remember hearing you talk about a conversation with him and a conversation with her. And then there was one fairly, you know, which is not always a bad thing, a very disagreeable person that you were talking about having an interaction with. And, and I remember listening 
and just feeling, wow, he's, th this is out of place for his purpose. Not because he's bad at the conversations, but it's like driving the Ferrari you talked about earlier on a, a residential street. It's just a waste. And uh, a Ferrari doesn't belong in our residential streets in my neighborhood. And you didn't belong in that conversation based. You, does, you needed to be in creativity and beauty. And uh, yeah. it's interesting. It's, it relates to the, the, the larger topic that this episode is about. Finding the deeper, more profound purpose. A profound purpose yes. found beneath the surface of what yes. we see that we yes. deliver. Yes, yes. You know, you know I love that. Uh, in these last five years, I have learned and enjoy the meaning of finding a deeper purpose. Yeah. You know, I work daily with people, daily. Uh, uh, on a daily basis, I have one of those uh, meaningful and profound experience. Um, I mean, even yesterday, this... Uh, gentleman um, he contacted me several months ago after listening a podcast that I did in this comp called All In and, uh, and he said you know my wife uh, uh, is a survivor of cancer I want to do something special for her can we create some custom clothing for her and then you know we wait a few few months until she got better and she came we created this beautiful a three beautiful outfits for her and she was I mean glorious she, she but she came yesterday w w with her husband and she said Tommaso every time I wear these clothes I get comment I feel I feel beautiful I feel so confident and, and people would come to me and say say J Rosalind you look amazing and as a result of that she said I want she said to her husband, I want you to feel the same way I feel. And so she bought a suit for him. <laughs> and, and so and the husband came to pick it up yesterday and he said, Tommaso, I just feel amazing. I, I really look amazing. It, 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 so my purpose now really is not only to create beautiful things, is to help people to touch the divine, to feel what kind of Formula One cars what kind of masterpiece from above they truly are. One of my most amazing experiences uh, in this past year, so a 95-year-old lady came to me once. By, you know, somebody suggested you should go to see Tommaso. And she was celebrating 75 years anniversary. And she said, Tommaso, she said, I, they told me to have you make a dress for me. And we made a simple white dress with this beautiful bright blue blue flowers. Gorgeous, simple, elegant. And you know, she had she was barely five feet tall, this white, white, white hair, and this sparkling blue eyes. And these flowers just li literally lighted up. And she said to me, Tommaso, I have never felt so beautiful in my life. Mm. As a ninety five years old. I mean, the energy I felt that day is indescribable. And that's what I learned. This is my purpose as a designer, is to make beautiful things look even more beautiful and know that they are beautiful. Yeah. I, I think it's a touching example of how it, it's not just packaging. It's It's not a quality product that you deliver that brings the value alone. It's really that you're custom fitting a, bo a person's body and, and no one but that woman would look as good in what you made her as she would because you made it specifically for her. For her yeah. And no body is the same. Yeah, 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 that's true, that's true. Is that true? Yeah, but you know, it also, it's not only that, no, but there are certain things that ignite your fire. Mm. I mean, I had a husband and wife come once, and and the the wife was lovely, beautiful young lady, and everything she tried looked incredible on her. And the husband said, "Sweetheart, buy this, buy that," but she was not one hundred percent convinced about the first three outfit. And I said, "John, 
I agree with you. She looks phenomenal. And she looks, but this is not what ignites her fire. I want to create, I call it a light, a light switch experience. Outfit number four, a outfit number five, created experience. And she was magnificent. Mm. She was luminous. I said, John, even though she looks equally beautiful, but these two outfits make the difference. Those light her up. And you know, then I, they invited me to the reception of their daughter, and she was wearing this one of these two outfits that she looked glorious. Mm. And that's what I, I love it. It's the process and the outcome that, like I say, is they, they, f they learn how to magnify it and recognize the already beauty that they have. It doesn't matter if they are tall or short or, or slender or robust. I, I, but the, 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 the slogan of my company is Carpe Vitam. That means seize life. Mm. The purpose is embrace life at any stage in, in your life. Mm. As a 20 year old, or as 70, as, as, uh, as short, or as, or as tall, as, uh, as uh, you know, depressed or my manic. Life is a gift as such as to be enjoyed, embraced at any stage. I always say, don't wait when you say, oh, when I, wait, I lose uh, 10 pounds, I do this. So why wait? 10 pounds, embrace them, enjoy them. And you know, I think, I mean, I, I, I spent two weeks in Italy, and you know, I gained some weight. I said, who cares? I had such a good time eating, you know, gelato and pizza and, and uh, pasta three times uh, per day. Ooh, you know, life has to be enjoyed, embraced, and lived. Yeah. Well, you probably didn't eat much chocolate, but you drank some vinegar, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, you, you are absolutely <laughs> right. So I want to I want to ask you before we quit. I want to ask you about something that uh, is is unrelated to well, it's it's definitely related to the pleasure of the visual senses and and the taste senses, but but more it's one of the others. It's connection and and uh, really one of the the differentiators between my leadership system and others is that. You know, I've got I've, I've co-authored a New York Times bestseller, and it has tasks in it, and they're the right tasks. But in the past five years, extending the research and talking to and investigating about a thousand people's work uh, assignments, and working with clients and figuring out why some people don't do the tasks and what's in the way of doing the tasks and how come they get stuck, and I realized something that's really changed my life, and that is that. The task is, is like a peanut, and you can try to get people to eat peanuts and it'll be okay, but the relationship, the human interaction, the very initial meeting, the development of early stages relationship, the shared experiences that deepen it, the prolonged loyalty and expansion of the relationship in many different directions or all directions, uh, if it's a spouse or a significant other, is really the chocolate around the peanut. And the thing that's missing when people don't get tasks done is that they haven't had a human touch or connection in an emotional way that inspires them to do the task or they haven't approached or dared to approach or known how to approach the new relationship or attracting the relationship or developing it. And so the steps have to be both. Yeah. You have to do the work, but you really do nothing great without a person yeah, yeah, or yeah. people. Yeah, and so yeah. what are your thoughts on relationships and how you approach them? And you clearly, I just heard you tell a few examples about how you approach them so expertly. What, but what are your thoughts as I ask you directly? You know, for me, relationships are easy because I'm a kind of people person. In fact, I get energized by connecting with people. Mm. Even when I work out, you know, I'm here lifting some weights, and then I have a, either five to ten second uh, interaction with somebody. L you know, my next uh, 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 routine, I, I'm, I'm feel stronger. So, I, 
I found energy. In fact, lately I read an article about radiance. And we are people that live with radiance. We either absorb or share radiance. I love to be surrounded by people that have that light and it allows me to energize. I had a client today from Ohio that contacted me and I don't want to, I'm not saying how strong I am, but I say, Tommaso, I need the Tommaso energy today. And he called me and we, I talked to him and I shared some, but it was, it was a two-way street. Yeah. Not only I share, you know, like radiance, but I absorb his and his wife. You know, it was amazing. I mean, like I say, I, I was a better person. This experience today, <laughs> Mark, I feel the same. I've, I mean, I literally, do, I am, I'm on fire. I mean, really am. I mean, I just ex I'm excited. I, 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 I mean, anyway, I just feel that connections are important. I have a little quote, like, you, know, you know that I'm a religious person, and I say, we are here to walk each other home. Mm. And that connection, it's uh, we lift or we are lifted, we help or we are helped in re in, in return. It's a, it's a, a symbiosis, uh, you know. In the COVID, the COVID talks about synergy, where one plus one is equal infinity, mm. and that's how I feel. It's not just two. Mm. It's a, a very strong, profound experience. Yeah. You know, what I have to ask you one more thing about that. What the, those bold encounters you're talking about are, are what I call them. And uh, what would you say to someone who doesn't dare to bring up a sentence or two with the guy lifting the weights next to him or in front of him in line, or or don't, they don't dare to add the personal to fitting them for an outfit, or they don't meet every they don't want to meet everyone in their tasting. <laughs> event they just want to get it done what 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 advice would you share to the apprehensive or the scared of having a bold encounter yeah you know uh, let me bring an example I work out with a, a, a person at, at, uh, at the gym that's a bit opposite from of me you know mm -hmm. he's very pragmatic extremely intelligent very well read, but he's not a people person. And, uh, but we work out together. We became good friends for the last three years. In fact, we are now even business partners. Wow. But it's been beautiful to see the metamorphosis. Remember radiance. It's a two-way street. You share and you absorb. And there are times where you need just to absorb. Even even somebody speaks little or doesn't, doesn't feel comfortable to give a lot. But he, by the time he or she gives you, it's something more uh, that, that, they, that, they, that you gain. That you so uh, I'm probably the nightmare I, 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 on the plane. I'm the nightmare. <laughs> so I hope this guy doesn't sit with me because I just want to put my little... Instead, I sit down with them and say, Hi, how are you? <laughs> Tell me more about you. I said, oh no, this is one of them. But you know, I am sensitive now that I'm older, where I said, you know. But I tell you, even the person that I understand that he or she does not want to talk much, at the end of the day, at the, at the end of the trip, he comes to me and say, you know, it was a pleasure talking to you. And thank you. I believe that we innate have the desire that you wish to be connected some people it's more visible some people is more dormant or hidden but everybody even a single in simple connection can provide energy and vitality to 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 anybody even the one that feels like i just want to be left alone yeah well and i think i think that if you begin with respect and you meet her carefully and, if, and really thoughtfully the amount, the volume in the beginning, then people are not scared to sit next to you to play. They, they enjoy it. 
you know. Yeah, okay. um, two, two, two last things. One is, um, let's just give people advice. There's a lot of people in this country and world that sell things. If they are tempted by the opportunity to provide beauty or taste and haven't considered that, Tell us your advice. It feels like Steve Jobs a little bit. He wanted to look. Be- he wanted the phone and the computer to look beautiful inside for some insane reason, but it seemed to work out okay for him the second go around. So, what, what's your advice on people that are providing products about adding beauty and and taste, if at all possible, in all the senses that they can? What What would you say? I have a. Two thoughts came to mind when you say that. The first thought is, I have learned in my life that if we do things with purpose, to, with a purpose to f- make a difference or to find depth, the outcome will, will join. I have learned in my experience as a, as a, a professional, like I say, I, I, I came into the States with $300, so it was very little. But, but now I, I've been very blessed with, with a very abundant life. But I have seen that the time where I put the purpose before the, the, the outcome has been more meaningful, more rewarding, and more timeless. In fact, one of my recent um, philosophy rather than the ROE where return uh, no sorry ROI return on um, uh, investment investment sorry return on investment my new philosophy is I call it the ROE that's return on experience mm. experience first and the investment will come mm. yeah, I'm a firm believer and I'm, a, a, I'm also not only a believer, but also a testament of that result. When I shift from ROI to ROE, every aspect of my life has increased. Hmm. Satisfaction and outcome. Hmm. So deepen the experience, bringing beauty and taste and bringing more purpose to what your product y- yes, is. Yes, yes. Yeah. The second thing is, is I am again, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I believe that we need to use our gifts and talents. Mm. Those gifts and talents are perfect directive to, to, to fulfillment. Could be economical, could be personal, could be emotional. So if we use and uh, understand what are truly our passions, it will truly are our talents. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. A no-brainer. I mean, uh, uh, it, it, it will enrich us in one, two, three many aspects of life. It's beautiful. Okay, final final question is just really about you. Uh, you do tremendous work. I'm staring at it. I'm surrounded by it. I've watched you do it even while waiting in your your other location, your office. Um, and uh, how do we get a hold of you, and how do people find you? Tell us that information. Oh, well, you're, you're kind. Well, again, it, is it to find, it? my name is Tommaso Cardullo, so I have, you know, either website, tommasocardullo.com, or, um, but honestly, most, the majority of my business is all word of mouth. Uh, people love what they see, they're approached by friends, and they, it's beautiful. I, I literally, I was thinking last night, they said, yeah, this month I made so many good friends. And, and, and my clients become really my friends. I mean, yeah. literally. Some of them even come to dinner. I mean, on Sunday. You yeah. know, after, after, just because, uh, again, for me, uh, there is depth in everything. But anyway, so, yeah, TommasoGorduro.com. My number is 801-358-2610. You can call me. Uh, any any time and I, I am delighted to meet people and to create things like I say I I feel that I love what I do I'm very blessed that I was one of those that had a dream and with hard work and uh, and endurance the dream
intro. Thank you for joining us to get leaders unstuck and thriving with their teams. You've heard a little bit about the power of bold encounters and leadership. Watch on, go to full episodes with the iconic expert interviews at markspencercook.com forward slash podcast. And please subscribe. My site takes you directly to YouTube video and podcast versions. Please make comments, share this with your friends. Also reach out to us to just brainstorm your priorities, challenges, events, or how bold encounters might help. Visit windfallpartners.com, click the let's talk button without obligation and reach out. I look forward to speaking. Thank you for joining us. Now let's lead with bold encounters today.